Good morning, everyone. This morning, our devotional is a mixed package. Oh, a whole mixed bag of chips this morning. See, today is election day in the UK. Boy, did I forget to do my postal vote. So I missed out on this one. So, okay. I found it quite intriguing that <laughs> mm -hmm. the mother decided to do election on her daughter's independent birthday, celebration day. But hey, let's say, okay, Independence Day, but the Americas and the storm barrel is rifting through the Caribbean. Did I say it's a mixed bag of chip? Yes, it is. So let's just start by the, no, I, I, I look at Independence Day with mixed emotions and feelings because boy, oh boy, let's get into it. So I, I struggle. Independence means different things to different people. An independence is celebrated, but you decide for yourself because I never, I never a bandwagoner. So we're just going to talk about things this morning. And as I think and reflect on independence, and I, I think and I, I reflect on how God, um, what's God's ideal for us as His people, and how human use God ideals to their own advantage, and to make this advantage God's people. So we talk about, you know. If you ever to ask yourself the question, what is it America is trying to be independent from? <laughs> so the indigenous people of America are groups of people who are native to a specific region that inhabited Americas before the arrival of European settlers. Yeah, they were here. They were here living in the Americas. Mm -hmm. So they're the original settlers of America. And they're the only people here who don't get to celebrate anything. So I have a mixed bag of feelings about Independence Day and Thanksgiving Day because of the roots of it. And I can't fathom my mind what is it they're trying to be independent from their mother for. Okay. So as the landmass comprises a total of the North and the South Americas, the Americas make up the most of the land in Earth's Western Hemisphere and comprises the New World, so to speak, as they defined and call it. So along with the associated islands, the Americas covers 8% of the Earth's total surface area and 28.4% of its island area. The topography is, domi is dominated by the American Cord Cordillera, a long chain of mountains that runs the length of the West Coast and the flatter eastern side of the Americans is dominated, um, is, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's dominated by large river basins, such as the Amazons and the St. Lawrence River, the Great Lakes Basin, the Mississippi, and the La Plata. Since the Americas extend 14,000 kilometers from the north to south, the climate and ecology vary widely and the time zones, Mercy, tell me about it, from the Eastern time zone to the Pacific, Pacific time zone. So human came from all over the world to, to live here, but as I said, the people who were originally here well, you know, people from Asia, um, the the Inuits into the near Ar Arctic, and and we and there's so many different settlers um that became the indigenous people of the Americas, and the first non-European settlement in the Americas was the Norse or the Vikings. It's said to be the Vikings or the Norse people, and however, the colonization never became permanent and was later abandoned. And we had the Spanish voyages of Christopher Columbus in 1492 and the 1504s, re-establishing permanent contact with European. Other old world powers, which eventually led the Colombian um, exchange and the inauguration of the period of the exploration, conquest of colonization, whose effects and consequences, and you know, this is the history we learn sometimes is man's history also. But may I tell you that there were people living here called the Indians, the American Indians, the indigenous people, as they're called, the indigenous people. And I never get it because we, have, we wear these labels in this place that call themselves um, an independent country. And a democratic country, which is not because it's a republic and a republic is never ever democratic. As a matter of fact, even other in other republic places, people are still allowed to vote and vote. Here it's um carcasses that are vote for you. So you you cast your vote. So in, in a sense, your vote doesn't really count because there's so many rules behind it. And it's all set up to keep us enslaved and not free and independent. But we have a set of people that live in the side of the world who think they're the better than everybody else in the world. So they fail, they fail to see the injustices that are done to them because they live under this mask to tell themselves that they, we are Americans and we are free, we are independent, we, we are the cream on the crop of the world. So we live in this farce that tells us that 
And so because of that, the truth of our own reality and what's going on in our world is not known and seen. They bought into the fact that our food has to be genetically modified because we're starving, as if God cannot take care of his world and its creation that he has made. Disease introduced from Europe and West Africa devastated the indigenous people and, 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 um, and the European powers colonized in America. So the people were living here and, and, they, and I want to come to Thanksgiving, you hear me harp about what they've done to the Indians and, and when they were struggling to survive because of the, the ethnicity built and they didn't know how to live in the Americas and who worked the land, they helped them to work the land only to their own disadvantage to be kicked off their own properties and to make American independent after they invited their families here. The, the, the independence, um, and I'm not gonna go too much into it and into the history and the etymology of the Americas and, and the billions of inhabitants and the two thirds of who here, because when we hear today about the, the Supreme Court making rules and people trying to make America great again, we know exactly what it means to make America white, to make America rid of it, who it really had before it, Indigenous people who are placed on plantations. We're talking about independence here, people. We are talking about independence because this is a, a stickling point for me. And um, because you're talking about independence, but you are, you put the Indians who belong here on plantations and give them loads of booze, booze, and they smoke and drink and drug themselves out. And in the name of, oh, they, they don't have to pay electricity and light and they have their own reserves put away on the little plantation and all of the stuff that is not funding and we're talking about independent America. Yes, we're talking about Independence Day. And as I said, I struggle, I struggle, really struggle to understand the, the, the true meaning of independence when it comes to this place. You know, when I think of slavery and, and, and um, when I think about slavery and, and its impact on people, many slaves um, and countries who were under slavery, including my own, they died fighting for freedom and independence because the Arawak Indians were living in the islands and the Tainos, and they tried to tell us that there are no more Tainos living, which is not true because their Tainos descendants to this day were in Jamaican and were all over, the, who, were born, who were born and mixed across the Tainos and the African that were enslaved. So America became America and they take the people from uh, Africa and other places to come here as workers and people from India to be indentured laborers as they did to the Caribbeans. And they came here fleeing religious persecution, some of them, and they set up because they didn't want the same thing they were running from Europe. But the very setup of the constitution is set up to make us enslaved and free. We talk about our, our amendments and our rights, but are they there to really protect us and make us independent? No, they're not, because they're only protecting the elite and those who have money. We talk about no one is above the law, but look at how our countries run and the leaders and people running for, for political leadership who are clearly above the law. So the law is only for some people. Yes, we are talking about American independence. Yes, the truth to be told, we are enslaved and we are enslaved under the disguise of, and I keep asking myself, what are we being independent from? Independent from whom? The people you invited in, the people who, the, 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 the Europeans and, and the, the, the French were fighting the Indians and and you took over their lands and the Spain and the Spanish wanted a piece of it and the Brits want a piece of it and 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 the, in the, the investors in the, the country in a nutshell I'm giving you a nutshell you came here in Virginia a Virginia company and you came as investors and you came running from religious persecution from Europe here and you you Christopher Columbus who who tried to say you you will discover places what do you discover you discover something that's lost or something that was never there how can you discover somewhere where uh, and it's always my take as a child in school, and I'm like, discover what? You didn't discover Jamaica. People are living there. How can you discover something? It was unknown to your, your imagination, and you had your own ideology of what the world is like. You discovered what? No, you did not discover Jamaica or Jamaica. People were living there. So when we talk about independence and these European settlers and investors, so you came and invest, and you got permission from your, your king, and, and your king Charles I and II, and all those different kings who were ruling, and... And you gave permission and charges to open up and to invest here in this world. And all of a sudden, and you decided that oh, I'm not liking my parents anymore. And so we want independence. True independence. What does it really mean to be independent? America, I keep asking myself the question. I find it difficult to understand the true meaning of independence. As I said, slavery means different things to different people. For the people in the Bible were enslaved. They were slaves because they were taken from their countries against their will. 
but they lived in a free economy where they could work and do as they please. That slavery means differently to the slavery of the black people. The slavery of those who were taken against them was sold by some of their own people into slavery because of money and, from, and, and investment from the Americas and England and from around the world. Yes, I'm talking about independence. True independence come from not being independent in a country because in a sense we are independent, but we are dependent on our leaders. Leaders who want to keep us under control by the very few families of this world who are wealthy to the point beyond degree who feels they have the right to control us. COVID is still around, people are still getting sick by COVID and we pretend it doesn't exist because that's our nature to pretend that things are not happening and things are not as they seem. We're talking about independence. Yes, we're talking about independence. We're talking about independence because just uh, just um, three years ago, um, the, 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 the people who got the opportunity in Rishi Sunak, um, he was one of the affluent Asians who, and British and were um, but not seen so because he was Asian. We're talking about independence in our world here. And now he was in parliament, but he's one of those est established few who are Etonian, like the, the wealthy few. Independence and in, in wealth in, in certain countries and money is different and prestige in different countries mean different things. We're talking about independence. But today I want to focus this independence, whether you are tired of um, the umpteen years of, of conservative rule or or you're trying to 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 vote today, um, and some of you choose not to vote because you think there are no better evil, and it's, to that is your choice. But you want to reap again the benefits of those who vote, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm saying some stuff that's gonna make some of you cringe today. Yes, I am, and I'm gonna say just the same. We're talking about independence, and and for those who have been ravaged by the hurricane, uh, um, Beryl, but God still has been faithful. We lift you up in praise for those whose rooftop has been gone and has lost your, your independence this morning because of your dependency on, on JPS and other providers to provide you with light and stuff. So you're now in darkness, yes, for those, because they never get it why they put electric wires among trees and you sit in New York City also and those some of the cities. And as the storm comes yearly after year, these wires were never put on the ground. So as the storm comes, the whole place is in utter darkness, yes. Don't understand it. And we put more money to put them back up and we, I don't understand the waste, but yes, we're talking about independence. So many of us have lost our independence because the hurricane has made us a little dependent this morning because we have to look to our neighbors and the others in the country for help and people overseas for help because we would have lost our homes and, uh, and been flooded out and we see dogs skating on trees like raft and all sorts of man holding on his roof and, and, with it, with, with, and so as the wind blow it down, he pulls it down. Like Jamaican people, you're so creative. Yes, you are. And um, the only in Jamaica, certain things happen. But we're talking about independence this morning. But the independence I want to talk to you about this morning, more than anything else, is independence versus dependency in God. Because that's where we, we were, were struggling. We live in a world that tells us that independence and individuality and self-reliance are widely praised and sought after in today's world. We may find encouragement to do what's right for you or go your own way in a casual conversation and on TV and social media. Did God design us for independence and individuality? And I'm not talking about slavery, folks. Don't get me wrong, because God wants us to be free. In Jesus Christ, we're free. I'm talking about a deeper meaning of independence, or did he create us to be in communion with each other and something more? The Lord is our rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge my shield and the thorn of my salvation and my stronghold. So Psalms 18 verse two. As I said, is independence biblical? Jeremiah 17 verse five to seven, New International Version says, this is what the Lord says. Curse is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. So what is independence? Independence is freedom from outside control and influence. For example, babies and young children are completely dependent on their parents for survival and to keep them safe. Unfortunately, that's not always the case because these children are abused. And, and I just thought was heard of our meeting last night about a five-year-old in Argentina who we're praying for, who was taken out of his home. I don't know how, how it would happen, but there's so much children have been kidnapped for organ donation. It's an outright shame and disgrace. They are not able to make their own choices and be completely influenced by an outside factor 
their parents. However, as children grow up, they gain more independence and freedom. Instead of being told when to eat and go to bed, they choose when to do all these things. What does the Bible say about independence? Independence in the Bible is not a black and white issue with a clear cut, easy answer. There's some things that the Bible clearly encourages freedom from, freedom from sin and independence from. For example, Hebrews 13 verse 5 encourages freedom from the love of money. And Romans 12 verse 16 warns against pride. And 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, we are not under the control of a fearful spirit. Of the Bible also clearly encourages us to depend on God and put our trust in him. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except to me. John 14 verse 6, dependency in God is not a negative, but rather something we can't strive for in our Christian walk. Depending on God, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you, says the psalmist in Psalm 56 verse 24. In God, who's whom I praise? In God I trust, and I'm not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me when I trust in God Almighty? How do we depend on God when we can start with the basics and go to him and pray and spend time with him in his word? Through this was this we can learn how to trust in in each situation, and perhaps we want to act in an anger towards someone, or maybe we want to respond to someone with pride. And as we learn to depend on God and His goodness, we can grow and become mature in these situations. As Christian, Jesus Christ is the Lord of our lives, and we don't want to be free from His influence and control, but rather surrender fully to Him and the plan He has for our lives. And if we recognize that to be dependent on God does not make us enslaved, because in Jesus we are free. He actually gives us a greater freedom than we can think. We don't understand divine wording and divine influence. But independence in God's lab is different from independence from human perspective. God created us for a community. Many of us try to survive against community, but we recognize that we end up depressed and, and with all sorts of mental issues. And isolation is the root of depression and all sorts of post-PTSD. But that is part should have equal concerns for each other. God's dependence, as I said, makes us more free and independent. It offers part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So God's dependency is different from man's dependency. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. So 1 Corinthians 12, Verse 25 to 27. At times, individuality can be taken so far that we lose sight of the value of each other and about caring for their needs. If we are able and always chasing our own happiness and desires, we may push the opportunity to love and to serve others aside. As Christians, God designed us to be in community with each other. Although the idea of being independent and not needing others may sound appealing, it's not real in our lives if we're being truthful. You see, it's a part of the enemy's plot and, and plan to make us isolated. So when we're alone, we have no one to rescue and we become despondent and suicidal and all sorts. It is not how God intended us to live. Rather than forming a life of self-reliance and isolation, we can build our lives around God and on his plan. No, God did not in want other countries to enslave us. That's not what I'm saying this morning. That's not God's plan and idea. As I said earlier, God wants us to be dependent on each other, to love and care for each other, like a symbiotic type of existence. He created us to learn and grow in Christian community. He calls us to love and care for one another. And let's not look to ourselves, rather let's look to Christ and depend and trust in him as he calls us to community and unity as believers. Acts 2 verse 42 to 47 says, they devoted themselves to apostles, teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs and performance by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to those who had none and those who were in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts and they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, this dependency I'm talking about is a total independent community who love and love in each other. It's not the type of dependency that we talk about. So the independency we crave is of the enemy, the devil. And if you notice that type of independence we crave, make us compete with each other and make us not help each other. 
God is calling us into community this morning. No man is an island and no man stands alone. Each man as my brother and each man as my friend. That is the type of dependency God is calling us on this morning. Not to be independent and to, as in our countries are independent, and then we, we chastise each other and we, we inflict pain on each other because we are now leaders and we have money and the others don't and we have property and possessions and we have and, and the type of world we're living in we want to tell us how to move when to move and to control our thinking and to remove the god gene in us that's a word they use to remove the god gene in us no that's not independence my friends i invite you this morning to turn your life over to jesus and to recognize that god dependency is actually setting you free from the tyranny of this world we live in and to make us free in jesus christ heavenly father we thank you god that you see independence and dependency different. As we select leaders, Lord, I pray that well, we know that this world is coming to an end and well, no leader is going to be good. Someone needs to be in there. So help us to be wise and overwhelming, Lord. And help us, Lord, that we will not get caught up in the things that's around us and not esteem the time we're living in to recognize that we're coming to the end. And the leaders that are going to be in, they're going to be vicious. If what the Bible says is true, Lord, we're not supposed to expect anything good, but we're deluded as your people. We're wrapped up in these celebrations and not recognize that the coming king is at the door. Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see God and may understand while we're living while waiting for Jesus to return, that you want us to live in community with each other, to be respectful to each other, and to treat each man as yourself, but to esteem yourself more outly than you ought to than each other. God, I ask you to bless us this morning. Be with those who are hurting, those who are grieving, Lord, be with those who have been ravaged by Hurricane Barry, Lord. Father, when I think of Hurricane, and I remember when I heard that about my first and only Hurricane, I've had missed many. And, and when I was in Florida, there were so many that was coming, Lord, and, and, and they didn't come. And that was my only Hurricane I experienced, Hurricane Gilbert. But God, that's okay. I don't want to experience too many of those. But God, I remember the excitement, wondering what it was. And, 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 and when we see the devastation it brought, and walking up and down and heard that there's going to be an eye that's going to come in. God, many people are, are suffering as a result of the hurricane. Eight across the Caribbean so far has died. Lord. Many have lost their homes. There are many things have been washed away in debris. Dead and, and graves have been washed out in all sorts. So there's a time when you see all sorts happening because people buried people with places they're not supposed to because they're buried in the water body. There's no space for cemetery anymore. And at this time you see bodies and coffins and homes and Everything just moving towards the sea, Lord. The people are hurting this morning. People who keep going back to the, the banks of the rivers and the banks of the seas. And the sea does take back its course with, with a pouring rain. But Lord, we ask you, God, that you bless them as they seek to rebuild their lives, Lord. And we ask you, God, that they will look to you, God, and recognize it amidst the storm and hurricanes of our lives that you are right there in the storm with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless, bless.